Hi, my name is Karan and I am working in Moss. Moss is one of the leading spend management platform in B2B segment based in Berlin. Today we are going to talk about data pipelines using Divisium and Kafka. Let's jump into it. In a Microsoft service world where there are hundreds of microservices working behind a product, every microservice has its own database, which can be of different types like SQL, NoSQL, etc as per need of their applications. From developer's perspective, services running their own databases and generating tons of data. While from the data science perspective, data is there in the data warehouse and analysis will be performed on top of it. Now the question is how to bring tons of data from multiple databases to data warehouse in real time. And one of the solutions is to create data pipelines using Divisium, which we are going to discuss in detail. So what are the data pipelines? Data pipelines are used to perform data integration. It is a process of bringing together data from multiple sources to provide a complete and accurate data set for business intelligence, data analysis, and other applications. Uh, there are multiple approaches to create data pipelines. Let's uh, go and see uh, one by one, what are those? So first of all, um, one of the basic pipeline is called as ETL. ETL was created during a period of monolithic architecture, data warehouses and relational databases. Batch processing was enough to satisfy data management requirements and due to this it is slow, time consuming and resource intensive process. In a traditional ETL pipeline, you process data in batches from source database to a data warehouse in mainly three steps. First step is called as extract. The process of reading the data from different types of sources, then the transform, converting the extracted data to a particular format to be stored in a data warehouse. Conversation also involved enriching the data using other data in the system. Then the third step is called as load. It is the process of writing the data to a data warehouse. Uh, well, it looks simple enough. So what are the challenges in it? ETL performs data processing in batches, which can take hours or even days to finish. We cannot achieve data in real time. And that is one of the uh, bottleneck of ETL process. They are designed for relational databases, needs own engines for performing data transformation, enriching, duplicate data cleaning, data integrity check. All this has to be performed uh, by own engines. They are less flexible about type of source and targets. So when to use uh, ETL? If you have a legacy infrastructure and a monolithic setup and batch processing adequate for your business needs, keep it simple and stick with your ETL setup. Let's see uh, the, the second one. So there is an alternate process called as ELT, like extract, load and transform in which you first extract the data and then you immediately move it to a centralized data repository. After that data is transformed as needed for downstream use. This method gets data in front of analysts much faster than ETL while simultaneously simplifying the architecture. It becomes possible due to cloud infrastructure and rise of cloud data warehouses where the cloud's processing power and scale could be used to transform the data. But uh, there are some challenges. First of all, be aware that you will be dumping raw data into data warehouse and you have to run transformation using cloud resources. So when to use it, if you find that your transformation process can't keep up with all the source data coming in, consider using ELT. Let's go to the third one. That is called as data pipeline with stream processing. Process often includes real time data such as web analytics data from a large e-commerce website, CRMs, databases, social and advertising platforms. In these cases, you cannot extract and transform data in a large batches, but instead need to perform ETL on data streams. Meaning, while client applications write data to the data source, you need to clean and transform it while it's in transit to the target data store. This can be achieved with Divisium and Kafka. So there are multiple components involved in it. Um, first of all, um, the data source, it can be any database or a storage bucket or any other uh, source from which data need to be collected. As you can see uh, in the picture itself, 
uh, data source can be like S3 bucket or cloud storage, My MySQL, Postgres, Mon MongoDB, or Hadoop. Any kind of uh, database can be a data source. Um, then the centralized component is Kafka Connect cluster. Kafka Connect is component of Kafka for streaming integration between Kafka and other system like databases, cloud services, search indexes, key value stores, etc. So Kafka Connect cluster is having two subcomponents. One is source connector, another one is sync connector. Source connector is a Kafka Connect plugin which listens to source events and posts them to Kafka. And uh, Sync Connector is another Kafka Connect plugin. It consumes messages from Kafka and sync data to destination. And we are also using Kafka here, which serves as a message broker for the pipeline. And Kafka will handle the storage and transport of the change events captured by Division. Then at last, there are the data store. Data store are the destination, a data warehouse where our data will be stored and available for analysis. So data store can be anything like a BigQuery or again, S3 buckets, Elasticsearch, Redis, Prometheus, Hadoop, JDBC. So you can choose your source and destination as per your requirement and can create the streaming pipeline. So let's look at a sample data pipeline. So here we are taking example of a sample data pipeline with most common scenario where data is coming from multiple databases and we need to collect and store it in Elasticsearch for further analysis. So here uh, in the Kafka Connect cluster, uh, it will be again, uh, source connectors will be there, sync connectors will be there. Source connectors will be one connector per database. And then uh, since our destination is Elasticsearch, so we'll be using sync connector uh, for Elasticsearch. Then uh, as a source database, we are using Postgres. Uh, and you may have one or multiple databases depending on your setup. So let's go to each component one by one, how the processing will look like internally. So uh, on the left hand side, there is database which logical replication enabled. So technically logical replication is a write ahead log on disk, which holds all events that change the data of the Postgres database. All events like insert, updates and deletes. Postgres replication is normally used to synchronize data between two Postgres instances, master and replica, but can also be used in cases like ours. PostgreSQL uses a subscription model with publisher and subscriber for the implementation of logical replication. So the instance creates a public a publication and one of the subscriber to the stream of the data changes simply by subscribing to the publication. When you commit a change, so what happens uh, when logical replication is enabled, when you commit a change to the database, now it will not only write uh, the data, it will also write a record in the so-called wall file and wall file contains a list of recently made changes then there is a one more component called as logical decoder which uses an output plugin to convert postgres write ahead logs into the readable format and stream data changes to external consumers so this is the functioning of a database uh, let's go to next step so here uh, now the Postgres instance is configured to produce a stream of data change events. Now we need to subscribe to it. And for this, we use a Kafka source connector called Debezium. The Debezium Postgres uh, connector acts as a SQL client. When the connector receives changes, in, it transforms the events into Debezium events that include the log sequence numbers of the event. The Kafka connect process asynchronously writes these change events in the same order in which they are generated to the appropriate Kafka topic. In summary, it takes three tasks. Handle communication with Postgres, transform raw events into JSON, and publishes them to Kafka. Here you can see an example of a transformed JSON event. Debezium em emits events in a rich format that contains all of the information about the captured data change. Uh, so you can see here in this JSON um, uh, example, that the type of operation is u, u means for update, then the source metadata, 
um, also will be there. The timestamp of the event processed by the connector, a state of the row before and after. So uh, the payload you can see before ID name and updated, and then after ID name and updated at uh, the timestamp. And the division calls this structure as envelope. Envelope. So um, in this step, source connector is able to create the envelope from the CDC events. Let's go to the next one. Um, so here, how this message looks like in Kafka. A Kafka event has a key and a payload. The key is derived from the primary key of the row and the payload is what we saw on the previous slide. We can have additional Kafka configurations like retention period, ordering with a partition, etc. Uh, so it again depends upon what kind of a Kafka cluster you are having and you can configure as, as per required. So here it is uh, Kafka is just a store and then the same message will flow to sync connector in the next step. So the Kafka elastic search sync connector is used to stream data into Elasticsearch. Now we need to transform the message from Debezium based envelope format to raw, form, raw format so that other applications can understand and accept the data. For this single message transformation, SMT help us. You can use SMT on the source connector to transform the message before it is written to Kafka or you can also store the source connector's richer envelope form of the message in Kafka and use it SMT. Okay, so it's uh, up on you. You want to uh, put it, uh, put the SMT in the source connector or in the sync connector. But here we are using in the sync connector. Both options work, and it uh, and it just depends. So you can do various operations with SMT, like extracting a field, inserting a field, masking the data, or converting the timestamp. So here we have inserted some of the fields from that record, uh, like ID, name, updated it. And then we have inserted a uh, field called tag with uh, values employee. We have also updated the event and uh, the updated at uh, timestamp in different format. So all these uh, transformations you can apply on the sync connector. Okay. And at the end, our data is transformed and it's reach to our data store Elasticsearch and allow it to perform analysis. This whole process happens at near real time and you will not see any delay for large traffic as well as due to uh, large traffic due to Kafka capabilities to work with huge volumes of data streams. So what are the advantages of uh, uh, this process? First of all, real time data streaming. It handles all DML operations potential for supporting many sources and target data uh, sources, message transformations on the go. We don't have to uh, put in our data uh, store and then perform the transformation. It is highly scalable and fault tolerant due to the capabilities of Kafka. This is a glimpse of Kafka Connect universe. There are like hundreds of connectors available, which you can use as source and uh, sync connectors and can flow the data through them. But there are also some downsides. So what are they? First of all, enabling CDC and DB take up additional space for the wall files. If you obviously like uh, it has to maintain the wall file, so it will need some space. CDC can only be enabled on the master server. It requires a primary key on every table. A schema change sync is only partially supported and truncate operation not yet supported. So these are some of the downsides, uh, but I would say those are uh, best practices also. So if you're following the best practice, then the downsides will be omitted. So if you would like to give a try, then demo application is available at the repo with sample configuration. We have discussed here's example with one source and sync connector, but you can play with different connectors as per your need. That's it for now. Thank you very much.